So, good morning, everyone. Today's 257 days since the first case we had over 37 weeks ago on the March the 12th. As of today, we now have 5,183 positive cases of COVID-19, 2,247 people that are currently under mandatory quarantine, and we have a net increase. And I think, will this get your attention if I said zero? I know we sit here and we do this every day and some of the feedback we get constantly on Facebook and other areas is that, you know, you put numbers out and you keep saying the same stuff. Well, we do because the numbers keep going up. And I will say this, thank you to everyone that does the right thing. I can't thank you enough that you continue to do the right thing. To the people that aren't, this is why we continue to go. And these next two months are gonna to be tough on all of us, on our hospitals, on hospital stations, on people getting sick, on the spread of this virus until we get the vaccine out and get it through everyone, which Dr. Whalen has said time and time again, it's gonna take time. It's gonna take months before everyone can get, va va get the vaccine. And I'm glad that now 69% of New Yorkers are willing to get the vaccine. Before it was less than 40% of people said they didn't wanna take it. But the reality is this, we need your help. We're in this together. And if you have a better idea, a better plan, other than complaining, by all means, send it to me. Trust me, we, we read through your comments. We try to adjust and answer every question and take it to heart what, what you want us to say and how you want us to go forward. But I need your help. And I've always said this, be part of the solution. Don't be part of the problem. It's a marathon. We're all tired. We have COVID-19 fatigue. And we're going to be this way well into 2021. As of today, we have 101 positive cases overnight. That's 1,640 new positive cases since November 1st. That's nearly 32% of our total positive cases since the outbreak began this month alone. Almost a third, if you look at it that way. Out of new positive cases, 19 had close contact to a positive case. One was reported traveling outside the state. Two are healthcare workers, and 79, 79 don't have a clear source of infection. Now here's the broken record, people. Yes, please. Know that Dr. Whalen and her team are just trying to do their job and trying to protect the people of this county and of the capital region, because what we do here affects the capital region and affects the state of New York. So be honest, tell us whether or not who you had contact with so they can do their job. And so our, our doc, Dr. Whalen and her team can do their job to stop the spread. It's that simple. I don't know how many times we gotta keep saying it. And uh, again, we're in this together. And it's alarming to me to see the people that are worried about getting together on Thursday, the people that are traveling. You know, I guess you look at one aspect, travels up at the Albany County International Airport. But I can assure you, Phil Calderon's not happy with it because he knows the impact it can have. He's happy to see people flying if we had a vaccine, but to have crowds again, to see these airports crowded is alarming. That over 2 million people decide to travel. And again, you can. there's so many means of doing it and we can go into that later, but we need your help to get through this. Um, I don't know how many times I can say that. We have 21,204 people that now have completed quarantine. Of those 4,300 tested positive for the virus have recovered. As of yesterday, we have 53 recoveries since yesterday. There are currently 43 people hospitalized, two new hospitalizations overnight with a hospitalization rate of 0.1 or excuse 0.81%, 81% of those who have tested positive. Yesterday, the rate was at uh, 0.8. 12 patients are currently in the ICU and yesterday that number was 11. Over the last five days, the average of uh, new positive cases each day is 88.6, and yesterday it was 87.2. And if you look at our hospitalization, yes, we had our high this week of 45, if I stand correct, as Dr. Wellington can 
straighten me out on that because she follows that more than I do, uh, the hospitalizations and the ICUs. But what people don't think about, and it was a great question, I forget who it was, Mary or someone brought up, um, the number doesn't affect the fact we have 10 go in, five come out, six go out, three go in. So we're maintaining a high number with people in and out of the hospital that, thank God, are recovering, getting out, but they got a long road ahead of them, a long road ahead of them. But to maintain and say at 43, that means, you know, do the math. When I go up and down with numbers, we do a 10 increase and it drops down. And, uh, and trust me, we look at it every day and we pray to God everyone gets taken care of and gets through this. We want you to recover. We don't want you to get sick. We don't want you to get the virus. But we need everyone to do the right thing. Over the weekend, we talked about the county's percent positive race, uh, rate since uh, we will decide whether or not we go into a yellow micro cluster zone. That will require a seven day average of 3% over a 10 day period. I know it gets a little tricky and you gotta pay attention to the math and the days that we're rolling into it. But as of November 22nd, the most recent data from the state we have right now over the seven day average was 3.1%. That would make the third day in a row where we've had over a seven day average of 3% positive rates. But some things I want to point out, which changes it, and you, you got to follow it. Um, I point out that our single day percent positive rate were lower more recently. On November 21st, it was 2.4%. On November 22nd, it was 2.2%. That could be a good sign, brings us down and start going in the right direction. Either way, we do need to do more to bring this rate down. And that's why I started off in the beginning by saying it's zero. Is that what people want to hear? Help us do the right thing. Help us stay out of the yellow zone, the orange zone, the red zone, because it does put a lot of restrictions on businesses. It puts a lot of restrictions on people, whether they do it via zip code or by neighborhoods. And it's causing a lot of issues. Just look around the state of New York. I've talked to my county executives at nighttime. We always kind of like, cry on the phone to one another and go through our day and take advice from one another and you know but i look at mark pulling carts out in erie county um they're they got a lot going on in broome county erie county and uh you know people don't want to be in the zones they're protesting at his house they had to have they had militia there they have have cops there um i know people are tired and i know people don't want to be locked down i know in california they were burning masks that's not the answer, you know? I mean, I know we're tired, but we'll get through it if we stay strong and rely on one another and just trust me, the vaccine's here, we gotta get it out. It's gonna take time, uh, but by protesting and by not wanting to be shut down, then help us do the right thing. Wear your mask, cough into your arm, clean your hands and say six feet apart. And we won't, we won't have to do this. You won't have to hear from Dr. Whelan and myself anymore. Uh, you know, we can move on with every other government program that we run. And trust me, there's a lot of other things going on every day other than COVID-19. We have to address not just in the health department, with all our great departments across the county. So again, please, we're asking people to not travel if you don't have to. Don't socially gather if you don't have to. Um, you know, I know it's hard, and like I said, you can do a turkey six months down the road. Uh, please, just do the right thing. And, and, and again, I, you know, look, I come from a big family. I know Dr. Whalen comes from a big family. We're both been generations here in the city of Albany. Uh, it's hard when you don't want to get together, you know. Uh, you know, my mom, who's 86 years old, or 87, I think. Well, I'll go with 86. Uh, you know, I go see her on the porch, and I stand outside, and I talk to her. You know, it's tough. You know, same thing with my mother-in-law. She's going to be 90. And, uh, you know, I keep telling her, stay apart, stay away, you know, and uh, trying to explain to them, you're just trying to help. I'm trying to keep them healthy, you know, and keep them away from one because we want to see our family, right? You want to embrace your sisters, your brothers, your loved ones, be it your neighbor, your friends. Everyone wants to get together. And you see the stories on the news. Well, just roll on the news, go on any app, go watch any TV station, radio station, and talk about families that got together that thought they were safe because they were family, and they got exposed. Now, fortunately, nothing you know that we can pinpoint here because you know you have to be truthful, right, and 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 say this. But help us get through this. We've marked over two hundred fifty thousand deaths since this started with the COVID nineteen, and uh, I don't want that number to go any higher. 
So you got Zoom, you got FaceTime, you got a variety of things you got to do. Zoom's doing a free app on Thanksgiving morning. Please take advantage of it, and uh, again, we'll get we'll get through this because it it doesn't risk the health of your loved one. So please, by all means, um, do the do the right thing. So I'm grateful for those who are. So please, I'm urging all of you to go out less, avoid large gatherings, wear a mask out in public, socially distance, and do all the right stuff. And testing is one of the best tools we have to combat this virus. So even just if you have a cough, a sneeze, or even don't have any symptoms at all, maybe you're in a crowded room at some point, you're at a bar, a restaurant, or just out in public at a park, or wherever it may be, and you want to get tested please go out and get tested uh you know we have a variety of places you can go to our albany county website it shows you all the new uh places that are up and that are uh you know wait time all that good stuff and most importantly we have the partnership uh, we, we did through dr whalen in my office uh, that you don't have to pay if you don't have the money we're going to pay for you if you don't have health care and you of me that the governor set up the same thing that you don't have to pay if you go through uh you of me but you have price shopper now walgreens plenty of other options that you can go through go to the website but again if you need to schedule a free appointment pay nothing albany you know at the university of albany you can schedule that at 1-888-364-3065 and then our whitney young partnership which has been great uh for uh 518-465-4771 dr whalen good morning <clears throat> so we're still experiencing high numbers and the numbers are trending up and i know uh as Dan just indicated that sometimes we sound like broken records, but these messages are incredibly necessary. I want to talk today in particular about Thanksgiving gatherings because I know we're so close to that. And I've heard um, from people that they are saying, well, I'll just get a test before and know that I'm negative and then it's going to be safe to be with my family. And I just want to set the record straight on that, that unless you have done a combination of testing and quarantine, you cannot be assured that you are safe. So let me give an example. If someone is exposed to COVID-19 on, uh, we will say, a Friday, they could be tested on a Monday and not be positive. They could then attend a Thanksgiving with their family on Thursday and start to develop symptoms on a Saturday. And we know that people can transmit two days before they become symptomatic, so they would have been shedding virus and potentially infecting family members at a gathering. That individual could then be tested again on a Saturday and be positive. So it's a combination. You cannot test your way out of this. If you have, on the other hand, done a combination of testing and quarantining, so that means in the two weeks running up to Thanksgiving, making sure you didn't have any outside exposures, and then you get a negative test, that can give you a more uh, reliable measure of your risk. And I'll say reliable, I cannot say guarantee. There are no guarantees. So please know this, if you have family members that are coming in, particularly family members that are flying in who may have been on airplanes, may have been in very crowded airports, and we're seeing you know, so much in the media about the crowds that are at the airports nationally. If those individuals come to you um, two days after that kind of an exposure, even with a negative test, you cannot be sure that they have not um, been exposed, that, they can, that they're not potentially infectious. So it's essential that people act accordingly because we know with the risk of large gatherings, large family gatherings even, that we tend to see an increased number of cases. And the problem is we're getting into that critical zone where our percent positivity is going to put us at risk of more shutdowns and closures. And more concerning from my perspective is that the rising number of cases will create a surge in our hospitals. This is what we need to avoid. And 
you need to protect your families, and particularly to protect those that are elderly and vulnerable. No one wants to have a family celebration and feel that guilt afterwards. And we have interviewed many people who have done this with the best of possible intentions, and then afterwards regretted it. We want to spare that. We want to spare that for everyone watching and spare that for the county at large so that we do not continue to see numbers, so that we do not see our hospitalizations grow, and most of all, so that we do not see more people dying. And really, the only way to do this is not to have large gatherings and to ensure that people are continuing to wear masks and social distance. Believe me, these are the last messages I want to be sharing coming into Thanksgiving. It's a holiday that I think is near and dear to all of us and is synonymous with large family get-togethers. This year has to be different. This year has to be different to protect all of us. And it is a responsibility for everyone to consider these words very carefully. So again, I encourage everyone uh, to, to do the right thing and to spend this Thanksgiving in a smaller environment in the hopes that the coming year will bring a difference. We're weeks away from getting our first shipment of vaccines and we are learning more about prioritization of vaccines and how that will roll out in terms of high-risk individuals and the healthcare workers who are taking care of COVID-19 patients. It is likely that the phased approach um, will not include members of the general public until late spring and possibly even early summer. So while I wish that these um, behaviors were short-term, it appears they're not. Uh, unless we really see large drop-offs in our numbers, which doesn't look likely, we will continue to give the same public health advice around protection for you and your family. This requires patience. It requires compliance. It requires a sacrifice. And uh, I think that the sacrifice is worth it. We are seeing people getting sick. Please don't be mistaken. Please don't think these numbers are idle numbers. These are people that are ill. Um, these are people that are hospitalized. Many people are, um, are quite ill at home. It's something you want to avoid. It is something you want to protect yourself against. It is not the flu, although I would still urge people to get flu shots to protect themselves against that. So please continue the important advice that we're giving you and protect your families. Thanks. Thank you, Dr. Whalen. Well said. And you know, when you when you think about alcohol and prescription drugs, serogism effect it has on your system, right? Not to do both and it has a bad outcome. Same thing as COVID nineteen and alcohol, people. I know uh, the college kids are coming back, and I know people like to go out tomorrow night. Please don't, please don't do the right thing, and we'll get through this if you do the right thing. Uh, because if you don't, we're going to continue to have to be here every day and continue to put the same message out there. Uh, like again, I said before, it's a marathon, not a sprint. We're in this together and we'll get through this together uh, by doing the right thing. And again, I do want to say this to the people that are doing the right thing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, but again, I, I want to applaud Governor Cuomo for signing the, the, the bill, the PFAS foam fighting bill, uh, being a former crash rescue firefighter at the airport. Uh, it's kind of interesting when you see the effects that has had on firefighters going forward with cancer and everything else. But I also want to say to Assemblymember John McDonald and Senator Neil Breslin for championing the bill in the state and the assembly and getting this done uh, and protecting the people going forward. So it's huge. And to Judith Inc. and to her whole team that's been on top of this, thank you. Uh, because it does take people working together to protect people going forward. So great job on everyone uh, with this. And uh, hopefully, uh, you know, it's, it's gone and we don't have to worry about this. And to the governor, thank you. So one of the other things I just want to say is that um, not to make people panic, like going out and buying toilet paper. 
but the one of the largest manufacturers of latex gloves is going to be shutting down uh, on, a, on, a, uh, on an international level. They've had over 2,500 employees who tested positive at a, like five or like 6,000 or 5,000, something like that. So, uh, you know, again, don't go out and, and run out. But I'm just saying this is affecting everyone. Even when you do the safest operation that you can by wearing masks and coughing into your arm and cleaning your hands and staying six feet apart, uh, you can still run into issues. So please just do the right thing and we'll get through this. Uh, our mental health support lines there as always for everyone, seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 5 at 518-269-6634. Our 24 hour sexual assault hotline number, please 518-447-7716. And uh, with United Way, Pete Gannon and his team there, 211 in New York State hotline. As always, please do the right thing, stay safe, Help us get through it. I know we're tired. It's eight months later. Almost, It's going to be almost nine. Uh, but we'll get through this because we're tough. We're New Yorkers.